Should I hit one of those? Absolutely. Which one would you well, recommend? Well, you can go here. Yeah. We can hit the uh, siren there. There you go. You can get different tones of that siren. Yeah. That's the fun part. Yes. <laughs> you have an air horn. <laughs> you know, there's many, many things. There's many you ways can. you can pull yeah, over the bad guys. Absolutely, yes. Once upon a time, the police sedan was just that, a sedan. Just like that Charger Pursuit, but not anymore. Today, just like the rest of us, even police departments like to have their crossover. And this is the brand new, well, not that new, about two year old Dodge Durango Pursuit, which is the police crossover. And coming up in this video, we're gonna take it for a ride. We're gonna talk to the guy in charge of it here at Dodge, and we're gonna find out just what makes this one of the more popular go-to choices for a police vehicle. And of course, we're gonna find out just how fast this one is and just how fast that one is. Which of these two do you think is faster? Because they are very different. These utility vehicles, Durango with Ford, of course, it's their Explorer version, have become wildly popular, I think, with police departments. Why is that? Correct. I think a lot of, well, two things. First of all, we're truly committed to the sedan market. And yep. we have some loyal customers with that. And as you may know, we're the number one selling pursuit sedan in the market is the Dodge Charger. And hopefully you get a chance to drive that today if you haven't already. But uh, and but we see the need for a uh, SUV, yep. especially the policing from years ago compared to, to now and the amount of gear they're they're carrying. And you know to accomplish the mission, they're getting involved in a lot more other things as far as you know weapons of mass destruction. They're having bio uh, safety and hazard suits in the vehicle. They're really putting a lot more um, stuff uh, stuff in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot more equipment. Which obviously, then on some of that, you need a higher payload, yep. and you need you need more room. So that's where this really complements our Dodge Charger program is with the uh, the uh, Durango Pursuit, which we're in uh, right now. Let's talk about you know what a police vehicle needs, right? First and foremost, you probably need a little bit more room because you're wearing a vest mm -hmm. if you're a police officer, and um, it also probably needs to have. A lot of durability because let's face it police put a lot of miles on these vehicles correct so how have you addressed those two issues in this so this is a uh, three row vehicle not the third row so you're opening all that uh, room up for uh, additional equipment in the okay. back on that you also notice that you have a you don't have a traditional retail console you have a police console in there to put a lot of the gear in the vehicle so most will have and we can look at it in the charger you're gonna have uh, you know maybe a uh, MDT a laptop a tablet a printer a keyboard all that to try to accomplish the mission and where you mount the equipment, especially due to airbag deployment zones, you gotta be very careful where you're putting that type of equipment in the cars. Now one of the things about a police vehicle, of course, is that police officers wear a lot of body armor. So you wanna have a lot of space. And so I think that's why these crossovers are becoming so popular because let's face it, they give you more space. Now the one thing I am surprised about is this. It's a traditional gear selector lever I think in this application, the rotary knob would be much better because then that would free up a lot of space for things like a computer right here, which when you think about it is really where you see it, especially in the charger. How about in terms of space in the back? Obviously we've got uh, room for the bad boys mm -hmm. in the second row. Yep. This particular one has an aftermarket, both the uh, plastic prisoner seat yep. as well as the uh, prisoner partition here. And then behind that, obviously, you need a cargo partition because a lot of the gear is getting loaded into that... Uh, cargo area where I spoke about what on a retail would be the third row seat is now uh, for additional police equipment. You can see some of the stuff you're putting back there. So this is a gun bolt so you can actually... Yep, you can lock that so it's separate, so, so, separate from the rest of the cargo area. That's Additionally, really, because yeah. the spare tire is underneath the vehicle, yeah. you have this additional uh, storage area here. What can you put in there? Is what it could be first aid kit, it could be flares, a lot of different stuff like that. Yeah. There's act now this is just one design. There's many over here too. There's also more storage down in there. That would be that third seat on the retail would be so. so. What do you do in the back seat? You don't want the guy like reaching out and opening the door, right? It's good. So, yeah. So we, if you'll notice what we have on back there, you can disable the door locks and handles and windows. And back there we actually have a uh, interior trim piece covering all the mechanicals of the. the uh, 
the rear door. So, and this is going to be pretty sturdy back here too, Rick. I've seen videos where people are like guys are kicking the back of this. And a absolutely. If they're, you yeah. know, if and we have some bars on the windows here too. Yeah. There's a few aftermarket products here, but again, this is how they're, you know, they need to accomplish the mission. And uh, there's a lot of support from the aftermarket uh, so, suppliers so. as well as Mopar getting a lot of this equipment available for the police department. So think about a traditional seat belt. If I had a prisoner in here, I have to reach across that prisoner to get the seat belt to bring it in. This is a reverse system, so it starts like this. So if you got in there, I'm just grabbing it like this and seat belting it like this. Oh, interesting. Okay, because if not, if you're putting them in the traditional OE seat or the front seat, I have to reach across and now my face is right against that prisoner. So this gives a little, a little more for officer safety as well. What else do you do to this vehicle to make it a little more police worthy? Okay, so we have engine uh, oil, uh, transmission, cooling. Uh, we're looking at a larger brakes. It's a unique brake system for the vehicle. Uh, some suspension tweaking on the on this V8. Uh, it has a unique front fascia that came off the SRT lineup that gives you uh, additional brake cooling. You take a look under it, it comes up underneath the fascia and then you're getting more additional cooling off the uh, over the brakes. It has a 220 amp alternator, large alternator obviously with the amount of uh, equipment they're putting in the car as far as aftermarket equipment on that. It's a pre-wiring for spot lamps and that type of thing as well. We offer ballistic doors on the charger, nice. uh, that type of thing, and a lot of large agencies do get that because sadly sometimes it takes a tragedy to you know add some of those additional uh, So you can, you, you, can, you can actually, like in the movies, use the vehicle as protection from... Correct. And of course you've got all the little... Let's see if it actually. Can I hit one of those? Absolutely. Which one would you like? Well, you can go here. Yeah. We can hit the uh, siren there. There you go. You can get different tones of that siren. Yeah. That's the fun part. Yes. <laughs> you have an air horn. <laughs> you know, there's many, many things. Many you ways you can pull yeah, over the bad that, guys. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Would a police department use this uh, in lieu of a sedan or to enhance a sedan, or would they use this more kind of as an off-road vehicle where they can go beyond just well, where we're the we're actually was? We're actually seeing that, everything that you mentioned, we're yeah. seeing on a front, front line patrol. Yeah. Um, certainly, if you're looking at a canine unit, because you can put a canine, uh, canine uh, the kennel in the back of that. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing across it, we're seeing in both uh, urban areas as well as rural. You know, you're talking about ground clearance and the all-wheel drive. With the V8, you have a two-speed transfer case, so that gives you that truly low range on the vehicle. So the versatility of this is uh, is very nice. Front end, you've got the push bar. Correct. Um, yep. is, That's an aftermarket to, push bumper as far as that goes. Do you have to modify the actual frame or the, the bumper? No, as an aftermarket piece of equipment, it bolts X kind of pretty easy in front of that. Gotcha. Cool. The final question, and I think perhaps the most important one in many of your minds is, what's the top speed? How fast do you have to go to outrun this guy? Uh, Top speed on this one is 118 miles an hour. Okay. And the charger that you're going to get in shortly, the yeah. top speed is 149 miles an hour. So yeah, if you're if you've got the charger behind you, that's the one. Yeah. Plus you're not going to outrun the radio no, or another police run. another police car down the but road. But let's face it, in our heads we think yeah, we will. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's where it counts, right? <laughs> Even though it may not be in reality. You know it's pricing on this? How much are these? It's government pricing okay. with incentives and stuff. It's really driven through our dealer network. Yep. And obviously, government and taxpayer money, we certainly feel that this is a great value as far as And do police these. departments do like a request for proposal, RFPs? Correct. And they'll go to you and they'll go to Ford? Yeah, I know what they do. They go to our dealer network. So we don't sell uh, directly to them other than the federal government. So everybody else, like you're saying, Colorado, for yeah. example, they'll put a, an invitation for bid or request for proposal. Okay. Our dealer network, you know, bids on those. And they're, uh, and they're sold in fleets, I take it. Correct, yes. Yeah, yeah. So you don't buy one, you buy... Well, in so, a lot of small departments, it's, it's onesies, twosies. Is it really? And that's yeah. really and it, you know, there's 18,000 police departments in the, in the country. Wow. And, more than half of those have less than 10 officers. Wow. So if you think about most of them are that rural policing that they need one, two, three cars. So if they have one that breaks down, it probably impacts them more than a large agency that may have, you know, uh, 10 that are having, you know, either got accidents or down or. Hey guys, if you're a police officer, let me know in the comments below if you prefer the crossover or the sedan, or if you would prefer <laughs> that car, the uh, 392. Cause I know as a guy who is always a little nervous when I see one of you in the rear mirror. The thought of actually, well, one of these with police lights would be terrifying. Remember, check out tflcar.com for more news, views, and of course, 
Dodge Durango Pursuit first drive reviews. See you guys next time. Yeah, that guy needs, both need to be pulled over. They're going the wrong way.